Hello everyone, in this beginner DAS tutorial I'm going to walk you through the process of creating your very first character, uh, getting all of your uh, materials and your wearables presets and everything set up, and then I'm going to show you how to save that character as a preset uh, to recall them later on to save time. So, uh, the first thing that we're going to do is make sure that if you click this up here, these are our different viewing modes, you want to make sure that you're on texture shaded mode for right now because um, that's going to ensure that our figures load a lot faster it's going to make previewing our images a lot uh, um, a lot faster um, they're going to switch to a more detailed view later on that's going to take a little bit longer to render once we get our our character a little bit more set up all right so the first thing we're going to do is uh, if you look up here we have a tab called oops I actually close that. We have a tab up here called Smart Content. So this is the auto cataloging system. Whenever you, uh, whenever you install a new add-on for DAS, especially if you buy it from the official DAS store, um, it uh, should automatically put it over here. It keeps everything cat categorized and where everything's easy to find. Um, so make sure you're on the Smart Content tab, and we're going to go over to Figures. And then each one of these menus will drop down with a sub menu. So we're going to go to figures, we're going to do people, and we're going to do a female figure, and let's do a real world. So when you click that, um, it should bring up a list of the figures that you have installed. So when you first install DAS, there will be some base figures, uh, like you should have the Genesis 3 and Genesis 8 figures at the very least, um, and then all of these other ones you can add as add-ons later on. But uh, I'm going to do an EVA 8 figure. So when you find the figure that you want, just double click the picture and it'll automatically load that into the scene. There we go. And depending upon your computer hardware and how um, detailed and high res your model is, uh, it might take anywhere from a few seconds up to a minute or so um, to, load in your, uh, to load in your figure. So it doesn't look that impressive just yet, but like I said, right now we're viewing things on the texture shaded view, but if I switch to the NVIDIA iRay view, uh, then it's going to use the iRay rendering engine, and that's going to make our figure look a lot more realistic, but it also takes quite a bit longer for it to render the image in the preview pane. Like that. So I'm going to go back to texture shaded for right now. So the first thing that I like to do is to apply materials to my figure, um, just to make it look more realistic and to, to customize the look a little bit. So to do that, you want to double click your figure, and that'll select the whole thing. You can see the uh, the brackets around the figure and uh, make sure that filter by context, this checkbox is, is uh, checked down here. That'll make sure that um, any extras that you choose or that it shows up here will be compatible with that figure. Actually, they'll be special made for that figure. Um, EVA 8 is based on the Genesis 8 figure and it's backwards compatible with all of the uh, Genesis 3 add-ons, uh, but sometimes they behave a little bit strangely though, so I like to use the uh, Genesis 8 add-ons whenever possible. So the first thing we're going to do is go over to Materials, we're going to bring that down, and we're going to go to iRay, and we're going to do Feminine because we're doing a female figure, and this is going to bring up the textures um, for all of the female figures that I have. So right now I'm using an EVA 8, so I'm going to scroll down until I see EVA 8, there we go. And then these are all of the different textures that I can apply. So the first thing I'm going to do is double click on EVA 8 All Maps. And something else you might notice is up in the top right corner, they all say MDL. Sometimes you might see one that says RSL. Uh, MDL are for textures and figures that are optimized for the iRay engine, and RSL means that they're, op they're um, optimized for the 3D Delight engine. So I always use iRay 100% of the time, and I recommend you do as well. So if you do that, just make sure that you're using the MDL, uh, the MDL presets. All right, so from there, uh, depending on the figure, you're gonna have different customization options. Some of them have more options, some of them have fewer options, it just depends. Um, but let's do, uh, we'll do an eyebrow texture, and then after that we can go to eyelashes, and for this just, you know, select whatever you like. Let's do, I kind of like those aqua eyes, I like unusual eye colors. Um, let's do the dark makeup. And then we're going to turn on normal maps, and this is just going to add an extra layer of quality to your image. Now, it's also going to increase the render time if you do that. 
Um, so just be aware of that. If, you're, if your hardware is kind of slow, that might cause your renders to take longer, but I'm gonna do the normal maps. And then she has some tattoo options that we can do. So I'll do a couple of these. There we go, and you can kind of pan around and see where the tattoos were added. Um, the other ones you'll be able to see when I go back to iRay view, but um, most of them you can't really tell what's happening just yet. There we go. And the final thing that she has on hers is she has um, translucency settings, which you might see sometimes, and those just change her skin tone. Um, so she just has low and medium, so if it's um, low translucency, I believe that that is more on the pale side, and the medium is going to be a little bit on the tan side. Let me go to Ira real quick, and we'll uh, double check. We'll see what those translucency settings look like. So right now she's on default, and then if I go to translucency low, yeah, that's a lot fairer skinned, and then translucency medium. And it looks like that, that uh, high translucency is the default. So let's do low. There we go. All right, so once you have all of your materials applied how you like, um, we'll go ahead and start doing the wearables. So anything that you put on your character that's not like a part of them is gonna be considered a wearable. So that includes hair, clothing, uh, shoes, like anything like that is considered a wearable. So I'm gonna go back to texture shaded. And uh, let's go look at our hair options. So again, we're in our base menu here, and we have a hair section, and uh, you have different uh, different types of hair that you can do body hair, you have face hair, then you have long hair, short hair, and updo. So those are the three we're going to look at right now. And let's do a let's do a short hair with this one. I've actually got one picked out that I like to use. Um, let's do there we go, gym hair. That's the one I like. It's kind of in alt hairdo with the, the side shave, that'll look good with the tattoos, I think. All right, so now we're gonna do our hair texture. So the way that I like to do this is right click, and then we're going to select gem hair Genesis 8 female, that's our hair that we're going to fix. And then over here, you notice that a lot of the menu options disappeared, because I've got filter by context selected, so that's only gonna give us the hair options. Like if I uncheck that, then we've got the whole menu. Check filter by context, and we just have the things that relate to the hair. So right now we're just wanting to change the material. So I'm gonna to go to materials, and then we've got an iRay uh, submenu. Hair, there we go. And on this one we can do designs, hair colors, and then different settings. So just like on the uh, figure that we were looking at a moment ago under her, uh, under Eva 8's materials, depending on the hair, you're gonna have different uh, options. So this one actually has a pretty fair amount of options. So we can have different designs uh, shaped in our head. So let's do, uh, let's do a dragon. I think that'll look kind of cool. There we go. And again, like these, that might take uh, just a few seconds for them to load in. There we go. And then let's do colors. Um, so this one, we have a lot of different color options for this one. And I'm gonna go ahead and switch to iRay just so we got a better idea of what these are gonna look like. Oops, yeah, and if you accidentally deselect it, just select it back there, make sure you're on the right thing. There we go. Uh, yeah, actually I kinda like that, I'm gonna leave that one there. And I noticed that when I selected the new hair color, it looks like it got rid of my hair design, I think. So I'm gonna go put that back in. There we go. Yeah, I like the way that looks. All right, and so after that, we're gonna start looking at clothing options. So I'm gonna select my main figure again. And again, you can do that either by double clicking the figure or you can do how we did with the hair, just right click and then select Eva 8. Now we've got the whole body selected. So while you have the figure selected, um, any options that you choose as far as clothing or hair or anything like that, they're automatically gonna fit uh, to the figure the way that they should. So we're gonna to go to wardrobe and you could um, apply each element individually, but just to keep it simple, I'm gonna to go to outfits, and then I have a bunch of prefab outfits here already. So most of these do have individual components uh, where you can kind of mix and match them. Like if you wanna to go to pants, and then you've just got all the pants. Uh, dresses, and you've got dresses, but like I said, outfits, I'm gonna do that, and 
Yeah, let's kind of go with this kind of alt kind of punk theme. So let's do that one. There we go. And again, you can do this however you want. Just pick whatever uh, clothing and color options you want to use. And that's starting to go a little bit slow. Let me switch back to texture shaded. And with the clothes, um, you can change colors oftentimes the same way you do with hair. Just right click an article, select it, and then go up to materials. This one only has the one option it looks like. Um, so yeah, we can't really do uh, can't really do anything with that one. So we'll leave it alone for now. I don't know if the other uh, clothes have any options. No, we're just going to leave that one the way it is then. There you go. And that's really all there is to it, to uh, creating your first figure. Um, so if we wanted to save this figure uh, to use later, um, this is the way you do that. So we're going to select our EVA 8. There you go. Um, sometimes you might accidentally select different articles of clothing or other things in your scene. So if you want to check and make sure you have the right thing selected, sometimes these brackets are a little ambiguous. But if you just check this area up here, this will show you what you have selected. Just make sure you're on the parameters tab. And it says we have Eva 8. If I accidentally selected something else, then it'll say, like right now I've only got her chest selected. But I want to select the shorts, then I've got comfy shorts selected. So for this, you want to make sure you have your model selected. And we're going to go up to File, Save As, and there are a bunch of different options, but right now we're going to do the character preset. Basically, this is going to save our character and all of our materials. So all of our makeup, the eye color, the tattoos, all of that, but not the clothing. The outfits we're going to do separately. So we're going to save the character preset. And so pay attention to this um, file path. Uh, mine is in this PC documents, DAS 3D studio, my library presets. And I'm just gonna call this character tutorial. And then save it. And whatever this says, just accept. There you go, it'll take just a few seconds to save the preset. There we go. And then once our character preset is saved, we can go ahead and save the wearables preset. And we're going to do that in a similar fashion. So we're going to select our model, go up to file, save as. This time we're going to do wearables. And for this one, we're going to call this uh, character tutorial wearables. And we're going to save that in the same place. And again, it's just going to show us everything that we're saving. So we're just going to accept that. There we go. That doesn't take long at all. So now if I delete that character. All right, so when we recall this character, when we load her back in, we're not going to use the smart content, but we're going to use the content library. And um, it should look something like this the first time you open it. So we're going to go to Daz Studio Formats, My Library, and then Presets. There you go. And uh, this one's a little slow sometimes. It might take that a moment to populate. So if you know that it's in that folder, just click on it and wait a few seconds and it should come up there. And then I've got my character tutorial and character tutorial, tutorial wearables. Um, so I'm just gonna double click this one and that'll load in my character. I'll give that a moment. There we go, so that's our character loaded in. And then we're gonna do our wearables. Just make sure your character is selected. She should be selected by default as mine is. And then we're gonna double click on the wearables preset. And there we go. And let's take a look at that. I'll preview that in iRay view real quick. And there she is. Yeah, just as we had her uh, before we saved. So if you wanted to uh, do a quick uh, image export or an image render, um, then we can go to back to our smart content. We're gonna go to poses. We're gonna do by function. Let's do a standing pose. Oh, thank you, I got the wrong thing selected. There we go. Yeah, just make sure you have your model selected. And let's find a good standing pose. Let's try that one. So just make sure your model's selected. Double click the pose that you want. 
All right, and you might hear me say in some of my other videos to never render from perspective view, which I'm going to do right now just for a, just for a, just for a quick one. But uh, be sure to check out some of my other videos. Check out my lighting and camera tutorials, and that'll give you some direction on how to uh, how to get your lighting and camera setups to get some really good looking renders. But for now, we'll do this one just for a test. So just put your um, just rotate your camera how you want it. You can use this thing. This rotates the camera around this cube up here. Uh, you can use your scroll wheel on your mouse to zoom in and out if you have one of those. And then you can use this four-way arrow thing to pan up, down, left, and right. And then when you've got it set where you want to render, just um, hit the camera. Actually, let me check my... Yeah. So when you've... Um, so when you've got your image where you want to render it, I'm going to go to Render Settings. And under Render Target, I'm going to say New Window. So it's going to do a pop-up. It's not going to render directly to a file. And then hit this Camera button up here. That's your Render button. So we're going to hit that. And depending on your hardware, it'll take anywhere from, I don't know, probably 30 seconds to um, 10 or 15 minutes to, uh, to render your full image. So we'll give that one a moment and then check it out. And there's our final image. That took me a grand total of about 2 minutes and 15 seconds to render. Um, and then from there, uh, you can use these uh, controls at the bottom to name your image and uh, save it wherever you like um, for use in a, in a project or whatever you want to do with it. Um, if there's anything you'd like to see me cover in a future tutorial, be sure to leave me a comment below and I'll see what I can do about that. Um, also, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already and maybe share this with somebody you think you, who you think might like it. And uh, that'll do us for this one. So I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.